Hello, Ectosage here on the Sage channel, and today is a very different episode of Singular Survival, because almost everything is recorded from well, Sage Cam's point of view, which means almost everything is going to be fast forwarded. Boop. So, here we go, fast forward footage already. I actually went ahead and stuck in a gyroscope on the spinny thing, because somebody suggested that makes it a bit smoother. So that's actually what's spinning at the rotor is just set to have no brake torque and it's turned off. And you can see, lickety split, the thing's actually drilling down all right. You might have seen a little flashes here and there on the ground of my character buzzing around, because, well, we lost all of our droids, all of our drones. They're all gone, except for the one for the moon. But the rest of them, even the one that was still there, it shot the bed. Anyway, I also went ahead and stuck in a bunch of these landing struts, since our old landing struts now look like little nubs. And, yeah, well, yeah, that worked pretty well. You can't see it here, but you'll see it in a minute. I actually went ahead and stuck in some heavy armor as well. Oh, yeah, and you see I redid the little angles there. That way it looks even better. Boop, uh, flying sausage welded all lickety split. In fact, once the flying sausage was done welding up all of those, which I think looks pretty cool and fast forward, I even welded up some stuff up top you can see right there. Whoop a doo da. Anyway, after that, I tested out the toss out system we worked before. We knew it worked in space, but I wanted to see how it worked down on a planet or a planetoid, as the uh, moon is. Something that doesn't have one real gravity, that has minimal. Anyway, you can see it works reasonably well. I did actually let a few pieces hit the solar panels and stuff. And this isn't loop footage, this is actually, well, what happens when you have, well, your limited floating objects. I think it's set to 50 or something. So basically as I get out, they despawn, and here you can see it's cut back because we turned on the blue ejectors as well. Not shown here, I did also go ahead and stick two more spherical gravity generators in to make sure we tossed that stuff far enough away. Anyway, at this point, I went ahead and disconnected the ship from the planetoid, from the moon. And you'll actually, yep, there it is. Just cut and... Boop. Huge delay before the thrusters actually kick in. They were turned on, it just wasn't showing. Anyway, I went ahead and cut all that down, and the footage is here again sped up, and tried to land, nuzzle the ship in, and get it drilling. I turned the teeth on, got them spinning, got them drilling, had not really much success. You can see it's cut into the train a fair amount from all the stuff we've done, but I wasn't having much success. Also, check out the top right of the screen there for a second. You probably noticed a bunch of rocks getting flung by. Pretty cool. Anyway, I popped it back up and added in some landing gears. Lickety split. I at first just added the one, which turns out it was still about, I don't know, 10 meters off the ground. Maybe 40, actually. And went ahead and added back in a few others. Stuck them about. That way, no matter what, as long as one of the legs hits, it should probably be able to find a landing strut well, a landing point where it'll lock onto the ground. Brought the ship back down. You'll see that in just one second here. There we go. Boop. And it actually connected just like that. Lickety split. Super easy. And then I started my whole drilling away thing. Moved the camera. And away we went. Digging straight to the ground. It's, you might notice this thing going up, like right there, and then coming back down. I did a lot of tweaking with it to try to get the speed and everything right. So all the pistons could just go forward all at once without any sort of issue. And so basically I could just say, hey, turn on press a single button, and the pistons would all very slowly start extending all of them all at once. The drills would keep drilling, spinning, and I could just leave it for a couple hours and let it go. And away it went. Of course, nothing can ever go to plan. Yep, ended up on my desktop. Sure enough, the Space Engineers client running Sage Cam, second Sage, crashed. Not too bad of a thing though because our main system kept on running so the game itself didn't crash the server side didn't crash so restarted it all and got it going again well at least restarted second sage anyway different angle and away it went once more digging down into the earth pretty awesome now it was at this point that i realized that well even though these pistons are pretty far stretched and they still got a bit more to go maybe one two blocks each they're not going to reach the uranium. They're getting a bunch of silicon there. They got a bunch of other stuff, but they're not going to reach the uranium. So I went ahead and ended up just going in there with a hand drill and grabbing a little bit more uranium and bringing it up and dropping it into the drills since they were so close. Anyway, guys and gals, that was about it because the main game did actually crash then on my main computer. So there goes the server. But luckily I had saved so I didn't lose anything. 
Anyway, guys and girls, that is about it for today's episode. I hope you liked this footage. I thought it was pretty damn cool, even if it took ages to record. I might go ahead and install a mod, believe it or not, to uh, bump up the mining speed on some of the stuff, because obviously there is the tick limit currently that prevents drills from being very useful, unfortunately. Maybe. I don't know. Thinking about it. Solid tiered mods pack. Anyway, guys and gals, thanks so much for watching, and I shall see you all next time. Ta-ta.